Hello and welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. In this tutorial I'll be showing you a different way of creating a ruler, or different at least compared to what I've normally done which is to create marks and then translate them certain regular distances along using the transform tool. This one uses the path effect editor. I'll scroll to a blank area and show you. Select the Bezier pen tool, click Control to constrain to horizontal, click and enter. And let's just um, make the length 50, there's a good guess, pretty close, 50 millimetres. So there's our 50 millimetre length line. With that selected, go to Path, Path Effects, and click the plus. Now, see nothing happened then, so I'll have to click it again, and then scroll down to find ruler. There are a whole lot of effects here, but you want the ruler one. That's selecting the last one I used when I was rehearsing for this video. Click Add. Don't worry too much about what you get because you can change parameters over here, for example, pixels to millimetres. The distance apart, let's make them one millimetre distances. Major lengths, let's make that four. The minor lengths, two. And every ten will have a major. And that's probably enough. I don't know why I'd want to shift the marks along. Uh, that's how far along it shifts from the end before it starts the marks. We don't we really want to leave that at zero. Offset is, uh, well I'll show you if I do that. So that's uh, how far along before it starts. Go back to zero. Oops. The shift the marks, shift marks is, you know, you can see it shifting along where it starts there. So I'll control Z back to that. Click on it. And the direction left means looking from the start, which is here, to the end. Looking in that direction, the marks will be on the left, which they are. You can change it to the other side, right, or both. But I generally prefer left. And border marks. Don't know what that really does because uh, if I change it to none, still looks the same. If I change it to end, looks the same. So I'm not sure. I'll leave it on what it was. Okay, with that done, if you zoom in, see this little area here. This annoys me that this isn't joined up. It uh, looks a bit rough. So we can get around that. Look, if you're happy with that, that's fine. But uh, what we can do is select it. I only have to click on it, actually. It's all part of the one object. And under Path, Object to Path, then Control shift k breaks that apart into its constituent units, items, so that I can say, uh, click on that, oops, that's that division, click on this horizontal one, shift click on that, and N for the node tool and drag around that corner. Looks like nothing selected, but click uh, this third icon there and it joins it together, you can see there. Now we can do the same at the other end. You can use the node select tool still. Uh, click there and shift click the vertical one. Drag around the corner. Looks like there's nothing selected but there is. Click this icon here and that tidies that up. You probably want to regroup it now. So control G to group. And now we want to put some number divisions on. Let's start with a zero. Oops text tool first, T, click, and then type 0. I like to centre these, so that just helps um, when we're translating things later on. And we'll just drag this one down to... Now, I was going to line up with that one. Perhaps I should have done this before I joined it, because uh, if I line up centres, this will line up with the cent... I'll show you. If I shift-click that, and align and distribute, click the centres, See, the centre of that first object is here, which is not what I want. So I'll just drag this to here, the first one, shift-click that. Sorry, it's select the whole thing. Select that, control-shift. Control digs down to part of a group, which that division was. Last selected and click centred. And that was pretty good anyway. Now I can, under the transform menu, control-shift-m, I'll move horizontally, Control D to duplicate and move that left with a negative 10 there. And now I'll come back to this one and change the translation to 10. I'll Control D and then apply. 
keep doing control D apply until you get to the end. I'm not sure if I got to the end there. I've gone too far. I thought I was doing a longer ruler. Delete those. Okay, now the text tool, T for text tool, change the numbers uh, to whatever you want. But uh, in this case, we'll go with the centimeter markings. Okay, notice I do 50. It's still centered. That's because I selected this icon before. I'll backspace. Click here and just do CM for centimeters. It's a bit too big to fit in. So I'll control shift and drag that down. And just slot that in there to remind us that it's centimeters. Drag around all of it. Control G to group. Click it a second time. The center rotation is there. Turn on snapping and make sure we've got rotation center snaps turned on, which you probably haven't. And drag this to the end of the line. Snap it there. That's just handy because if we want to rotate. Click it once, click it a second time. Rotates about there. It's more convenient. Oh, just control Z, didn't redraw, but if I scroll in and out, it refreshes the screen. Then if we draw a circle, for example, let's, uh, with the select tool, make it 14 exactly. Uh, width, enter. And I'll make it the same for the height. I should have constrained proportions, but anyway. Give it a fill. Oops. Okay, now let's use our ruler, see if it's... Uh, Oh, it's at the back, see? We'll bring it to the front there, clicking that icon, and actually snapping there. But uh, it's snapping, we want it to snap there. You can see 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yep, that's accurate, an accurate ruler. If you had something uh, sloping that you wanted to measure, let's just do a rectangle and rotate it, give it a fill. So you wanted to measure the length of that without moving the rectangle, we can snap. If it doesn't snap correctly, we'll again bring it to the front and drag it closer to the corner and it'll snap there. Control mouse wheel there to zoom out. Click it a second time and we can rotate, drag it around there and measure. It looks like that's about uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, nearly 17, maybe 16.8 millimeters. So there's a way you can create a ruler and use it in Inkscape. Thanks for watching.